Hey guys, it's Sohi. I want to take a few minutes today to elaborate on uh, a discussion that Lane and I were having. For those of you who listened to our most recent Physics Science Radio episode, it's, I believe it's episode 12, we had a Q&A session with, uh, with readers where um, you guys were asked to, to post any questions related to fitness and then we would go through and answer them. And one of the questions that came up was which is more important for fat loss or for aesthetic goals? Uh, is training more important or nutrition more important? I answered that nutrition is more important and then Lane answered, he countered that he thinks that uh, training is more important and then he explained his reasonings behind why he chose nutri or her, why he chose training. The funny thing is I actually don't disagree with him as far as his reasoning behind why he chose new, why he chose training but I figured I would take a few minutes today to to elaborate um, let's pretend that you are an individual who um, has not been exercising regularly at all you have not been watching your nutrition at all you have no idea uh, how much protein you're consuming you have no idea how much fiber you're taking in um, you kind of eat whatever you want in uh, in massive quantities and um, you pretty much have no fitness background okay and let's say that you decide that you want to get in shape you want to lose some pounds you want to look better and uh, you decide that you're going to start hitting the gym on a consistent basis you're gonna start lifting weights so you're gonna go from zero times a week to let's say uh, let's just say four days a week you're gonna start lifting weights what would happen if you were to do training only as a beginner, here's what would happen. You would probably experience uh, some pretty good strength gains um, because you are a beginner and you're gonna have a lot of uh, neuromuscular adaptations happening. At the same time, you may find yourself losing a bit of fat and looking a little bit better. Uh, and this is really because, because you just went from doing nothing at all to doing something in the gym. Those of you listening probably know now that lifting weights is really great regardless of whatever your physique goal may be. If you want to lose fat, you want to lift heavy weights. If you want to gain muscle, you want to lift heavy weights. If you want to get stronger, you want to lift heavy weights. And um, Holly. Uh, so, so yeah, you're going to get stronger. You're going to get progressively stronger. Um, you're going to look a little bit better. So there may be some mild hypertrophy and some mild fat loss happening. Now, this is much more likely to happen in a complete beginner than it is going to happen for an intermediate or advanced trainee who, who you know, you focus on your training only and you neglect your nutrition. And I do want to say by, by training, I want to emphasize that training to me means lifting heavy weights and proper training also means you are prioritizing compound movements, things like um, squat variations, deadlift, bench, pull-ups, um, hip thrust, and glute bridge variations, they're making up the, the bulk of your training program. And then uh, obviously you're gonna have an appropriate amount of volume. So Lane says, he, Lane is very big on volume and I am too. So you wanna have sufficient volume to get a training effect. Um, but also of course your set and rest screen matters too. Um, how much rest you're taking in between sets will also matter because you know, what if you're doing, uh, I don't know, five sets of three, squats and you're resting 20 minutes in between are you really going to get the the training effect that you would if you maybe took three to five minutes of rest in between no it's going to be different so all those things matter so assuming that you have a sound and smart training program yes as a beginner you will see some hypertrophy you will experience some simultaneous fat loss this is a phenomenon known as body recomposition or or just recomp but at the same time if you are not watching your nutrition a lot of times what happens is that because you are increasing your exercise activity, because you're working out more, you may unintentionally end up eating more calories to compensate, um, either because you get hungrier from the increased exercise or you overestimate your calorie burn during that exercise and then you eat way more calories than you need. So what can end up happening in that case is that you can end up actually building muscle yes but also putting on some body fat and this is this is when a lot of people say oh lifting weights made me bulky because I started squatting and my legs got huge and chunky what's actually happening is that yes you're lifting weights but you're also eating more calories and the excess calories is what's making you bulky so in that regard 
uh, training, the training was good for you in a way, but because you ne neglected your nutrition, you didn't really get the body that you wanted, that you quite wanted. So training alone will take you only so far. Okay, so let's flip the scenario around. Let's say that you were to focus on nutrition only. You were to start fixing your diet. Okay, so you monitor your calorie intake. You set your calorie intake at um, enough of a caloric deficit that you start seeing some fat loss happening. In addition to that, you uh, increase your protein intake. Uh, the general recommendation is one gram per pound of body weight, or though you can go also one gram per pound of lean body mass. Um, you want to consume sufficient fiber. Uh, you want to minimize your sugar intake, uh, mostly just because you know it, sugary foods tend to have tend to be more calorically dense. So if you if you limit the amount that you consume, note that I'm not saying cut it out completely, but if you exercise portion control and you're smart about how much you're eating, you will start to see fat loss progress. Um, and of course, you know, monitoring your stress levels and drinking enough water, etc. So you will lose some fat, okay? If you were to do this, you you will lose some fat. However, because you are not lifting weights at the same time, you will also experience some loss of lean body mass. So you're gonna lose some muscle at the same time. I don't know that anyone really wants to lose muscle mass. Uh, I don't know that I've ever met uh, women who really genuinely thought that they had too uh, much muscle mass and have that actually be true. A lot of times when people, when women and, and guys say, oh, I think my quads are too big, most of the time it's not that their quads are too big, it's that they have a thick layer of fat over their muscle, which makes it look bulky. So if you were to lose that fat, then you wouldn't think that your quads are too big anymore, okay? So that was just a side tangent. But again, if you're doing diet only, yes, you will lose some fat, but you will also lose some muscle mass. So what will happen is that you'll just end up being a smaller, but not necessarily firmer or more fit looking version of yourself. So you'll be just as doughy as before. You'll be just as soft as before um, because you're not training. So let's say you start fixing up your diet and then and then you were to throw in uh, consistent regular training into the mix, consistent regular uh, heavy weightlifting into the mix. And that's when you'll really see the magic start to happen. That's when you start to see um, your body taking shape. Um, you're gonna have you know firmer muscles, you're gonna have everything popping, your abs popping, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And you're gonna start looking the way that you want to look, that you envisioned in your head, which is really just a roundabout way of saying, uh, yeah, both training and nutrition are very, very important. But again, going back to the initial question, which is more important, uh, I think if, uh, if I was back into a corner, I would say, I would still say that nutrition is more important. And here's why. It's really easy, relatively speaking, it's much easier to consume 200 fewer calories per day than to exercise off 200 calories. For me, uh, I'm really small. For me to burn off 200 calories would probably take around 40 minutes of um, of exercise around or 30 to 40 minutes. Whereas, you know, cutting out 200 calories a day takes no extra time on my part. Conversely, it's a lot easier to eat back extra calories and that can easily, easily derail or uh, un undo a lot of your hard work in the gym, especially if you are past the beginner stages as a trainee, especially if you've been doing this for a while. Um, what I will say is that, yes, you have to be, you should be definitely consistent in both your training and your nutrition programs. However, let's just say you got really busy all of a sudden from work and life, etc., and you are supposed to work out five days a week, but you only made it two or three days a week. However, you nailed your nutrition, you nailed your macros, and you were at 100% dietary adherence, you will see better progress that way than from getting in all your training sessions, but only meeting your macros half the time. So if you had 50% dietary adherence, but 100% uh, training adherence and consistency, you will see not as good progress. You will really not make progress, especially if you're a woman and especially if you are small and petite because the smaller you are, the less wiggle room that you have to work with as far as uh, dietary discrepancies. So for me, 150 calories um, off my goal can can make the difference between, you know, if you add enough days of those together, can, can be the difference between making progress, you know, losing a pound of fat at the end of uh, two weeks versus nothing, absolutely nothing. 
I've always made it a point to prioritize nutrition. So no matter how busy I get, if I ever have to miss a training session, um, which you know every it happens every once in a while, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw a tantrum over it or anything. But I always have to make sure, especially if I have a specific aesthetic goal in mind, always want to make sure that my diet is on point. And I and there are, there are several different. Um, percentages that people will give you so you know if there's a pie chart that said and that said oh this is the pie chart representing uh what you look like um let's say 15 percent is going to be genetics uh 70 percent is going to be your diet so you know total calorie intake and then the macronutrient breakdown um plus obviously the quality of the food that you're eating and then the remaining what is that 70 15 percent is going to be your exercise so you're training um your cardio if you're doing any cardio even walking counts as exercise. I like this pie chart because I think it really goes to show people just how important dietary adherence is to meeting your goals. So um, yes, you're not going to see as good results if you're doing just nutrition or just training. But if you combine the two, you're going to, that's, that's, the, double, that's the double whammy that you want. You want to combine your training and your nutrition and you want to be more consistent. But when it comes down to choosing one over the other, then you want to prioritize nutrition consistency over training consistency. By the way, that does not mean, oh, so he said that I only have to get in half my gym sessions and I'll be good to meet my, my fat loss goal. I'm not saying that at all. No, do not miss your gym sessions. Make it a priority. Make your diet a priority. But if you're really in a bind and you miss one session a week every once in a while, that's not going to kill you, okay? Nutrition is number one. Number one. All right?